That wasn't loud enough, Andy. Right, do you want me to... Yeah, the one that's leaving the rest of me. Walsall? That's what I think. Okay, so first call, uh, Tim Peake taking some raspberry pies into space on the International Space Station and running some kids' codes. So we've got some mastery pies here and we've got some kids' programming. So I'll just tell you a little bit about Tim Peake. I don't know, has anyone heard of Tim Peake flying up to the International Space Station? He hasn't heard of Yeah, <laughs> quite a few people. Okay, so I can quickly go through quite fast. There's Tim Peake, there's his Principia badge. And he's holding the book, Isaac Newton's Principia, a book called About Gravity. So that's chosen um, as a little competition with kids. So I think it's a 12-year-old boy designed that. Principia being Isaac Newton's gravity book, Space Gravity. Um, there's an apple there. And if you look on the apple, there's actually the International Space Station as the shine. Uh, there's a rocket. And if you look around, just where it says Ben Kipia, if you follow it around the company, <coughs> that's actually the flag of the UK with the red, white and blue. So there's Tim Peake and his other astronauts who are going up on Mission 46. How will Tim get into space? <coughs> you probably saw that. And there it is. Well, we live, we live on the International Space Station. And there's a picture of it. Where will he work? That's pointing to the Columbus module, um, which is the European Science Laboratory. It's basically a big science laboratory, plus some solar panels. And there's a close up of it. And there's a view of it. So it's a little bit of a squash, but he's got enough room to do lots of things. And if you see, there's no tables and there's not really any cupboards, everything's just stuck to the wall. What well, can be doing in space? Well, you'll be floating around, <laughs> as that picture says. Um, on the right, there's Tim Peake, and he's holding the Astro Pi. He's got, he's looking at his head with that. He's doing, bottom left, he's going to be doing some get fit, with kids and rocket science is about sending rocket seeds into space so when he brings the seeds back kids in the UK will actually grow the seeds and they'll compare growing seeds in space which have been in space to seeds which haven't been in space and see if there's a difference a few more things he's doing you can make a film send your film in space there's a space diary you can get and you can keep track of what Tim's up to and what you're up to. Train like an astronaut, that's the one all about getting fit. Um, great British space dinner. <coughs> some kids have designed some food for Tim, which you'll be able to eat up there. And it's all very health and nutritional. Okay, he's doing some serious science. And that's his diary and his fellow crewmates. So it's all very planned. He has to do two hours of exercise every day. That's the window he can look out. And that's Sam, who's just come back with the camera. So they take lots of pictures and they tweet them out on Twitter. And that's where they tweet them from. And there's a picture. <laughs> so yeah, he has to keep fit, he has to sleep, he has to eat. If you look on the bottom right, when they're doing their fitness training, they actually tie them down with a big elastic band so they've got some force they have to work against or else if they couldn't run, they'd float and they wouldn't do a lot of exercise. Um, there's his food flying around as well. Who will support Kim's mission? Mission control. There's a whole load of people who's going to help him. He's going for a space walk. You might have seen that on the news yeah. quite recently. <laughs> How will he return to work with a band? <laughs> yes, yeah, so and they'll squash them into that 
uh, that little thing there and they'll stick a parachute on it. It'll crash. Hopefully it won't explode. <laughs> and when they get to the bottom, um, when they come out, they have to sit down in these great padded seats. And after being in space for six months, they're really weak. But also, in space, they, they're balanced. They haven't got gravity to help their balance. So they get back, and it's like they've spun around and get really dizzy, and they feel sick. Um, so they have to sit down, and it takes about two or three days for them to cope with gravity. There's Kim Peak. That's his official picture. Uh, you can view the ISS if you look up, and you can see Tim flying overhead. He looks like a star moving quite quickly, and you can give him a wave. There was a wave to Tim Peak on Twitter recently, and everyone was going outside and waving to him. So he'll be looking down every so often, taking pictures, and he might be waving at him whilst he's looking. That's a print kidney mission, and if I can swap over, I can show you a little bit more about the raspberry pies. I don't think I can. I need Beth May to... Uh, Drag it up. Drag it across. There we go. So I'll tell you about the Astro Pies. The Astro Pies are normal Raspberry Pies, which we've got in this room here, and an additional sensor board. And we've got a few over there, and I can see some of them flashing away. Okay. All right, there we have a good picture of it. Um, so there's the variety of pie and there's the sensor board. That one goes on top of the raspberry pie, it pushes on and it's, and it's held. Up in space it has a real-time clock, um, but the ones down here we don't need a clock because we can just plug into the internet. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'll explain what's on them. So they've got an 8x8 LED display and we've got a few flashing around here and you can program them. He's not allowed to plug in the Raspberry Pi into a monitor or into a screen or onto the internet. It takes so long um, to actually get everything approved and allowed um, that they just wouldn't have that. It would take too long and they never do the experiment. So the only way he could get information out is through this little screen. So whilst you might have a great big screen and browse the internet normally, um, with 64 LEDs, there will have to be some clever means of talking back to Tim so he knows what he's doing with it. Right. Um, that's the output to Tim, and the inputs are quite interesting. And it's a science experiment, and it's a science experiment for kids. And it's for kids to learn. So they've got a temperature sensor, they've got a couple of temperature sensors, um, to tell temperature. They've got humidity, which will give you the relative humidity. And they've got um, an accelerometer, which will give you uh, the direction in which the Raspberry Pi is pointing, the rotation, and also the acceleration. So that will detect things like the orientation and position when it's stuck to the wall. So as, as the International Space Station moves around, as they put their thrusters out, maybe if it gets hit by a rock or something, you'll actually be able to detect that movement on the Raspberry Pis, and you can log that and analyse that. Um, there's also air pressure. Did I mention air pressure? No, so hopefully the air pressure should be quite stable, but if there's a hole and all the air escapes, um, you'll be able to measure that and also <laughs> <laughs> but, but also some there, there'll be some small variations and it's quite accurate um, hopefully it won't change too much for obvious reasons but there will be changes and they will be measurable um, so that's the hardware anything else you've got on it does anyone know what relative humidity is anyone not know what that is no. that's the amount of moisture in the air and as you're breathing out, water comes out. So it's like a foggy 
cold today, you can see the moisture coming out. And the Astro Pi can actually detect the amount of moisture to that level that it can detect the astronaut. Um, there's also a couple of Raspberry Pi cameras, and the Raspberry Pi cameras are really good. They cost £20, and compared to the £20 million cameras, which they normally send up space, um, they've got a few good features. Um, one of the features is they're not shielded from radiation. If you spend £20 million, you'll have a lot of shielding, and you won't get radiation hitting it. Um, on the other hand, you can use that feature to measure radiation. Um, and one of the people who've actually done um, some experiments have used that feature. Uh, Raspberry Pi cameras also don't have, one of them doesn't have an infrared filter on it. So normally when you take a picture, you don't want infrared or else it will all look strange. But if you use the infrared, uh, the camera without an infrared filter and you can have a blue gel, then what you can do is you can look at plants and you can see the plants photosynthesize. So plants look green to us. When they're dead, they go brown. But when you look at, through this camera with the blue gel, you can actually see them giving off uh, infrared and you can measure the amount of infrared. Um, come back, do a little bit post-processing and you can work out how healthy plants are. So there's some ideas of what you could do, um, of what you can do. So there it is, it's now in space, and Tim's tweeted, he's on Twitter all the time. Well, if he's anything like me, he is. But <laughs> <laughs> he's tweeted, and he's, he gets like thousands and thousands of retweets and likes, and he's running a few competitions, so if you want to see what he's up to, and there is, is, you can't tell it there, but he's stuck the raspberry pie onto the wall um, with a little arm, and it's, it's there, that fits. Um, you can see what it looks like there, it's in a case, and it's in an aluminium, aluminium case, it's space grey. There it is. <laughs> and the reason it's so bulky is because there's no, <laughs> there's no air, in, there's no gravity, in space, so the hot air doesn't rise, so I'm starting to go a little bit. Um, so that, that's quite big, and it acts as a conductor, and there's lots of little fins and little um, extra bits to get the heat away. So raspberry pies aren't very hot, um, but obviously we, if we're measuring temperature, we want to cool it down a little bit. Okay, shall we go to the next one? Oh, <laughs> Um, if you look at the next three, that's me and a little ten-year-old, he's nine there, um, in South Enjam. And he entered and he got highly commended. And if you look at the next one, oh, you don't know how to use Twitter. <laughs> Click on Twitter. Yeah. Oh, two tweets on that one. Okay, and there's a the boy. Uh, who entered if you go to that one? Okay, and there's two girls there. Um, one's tw 12 and 14. One's 14. And um, they both got highly commended. And the boy, the first boy's just on the right there. And those three children, they wrote code. They got highly commended, and Tim is going to run their code on the International Space Station in a couple of weeks. So that's quite exciting. Excellent. Is there anything special about the young lad? Um, yeah, he's a brilliant programmer. Uh, he's autistic, and he's only he'd only been doing uh, Raspberry Pi things for about six months at that point. So he's really he's like people here. There's nothing nothing too special about. They're really, apart from the fact they're really interested and they're going to answer pies like everyone here. So, um, talking about people here, um, we've got some people playing about with the Astro Pi. Tim's going to go up to, well, he's going to go up and he's going to run the experiments and he's also going to email them back to people. Um, so, with that equipment, we can run the same experiments here on Earth and compare what happens up, up in space. Um, so no one knows what the answer is, 
because um, we haven't run the experiments and we don't know, we've never had Raspberry Pis in space before. Um, but that would be a very interesting thing to have a look at. Um, I'll just finish off with telling you what the actual winners were, given that you might be able to run the same code and it, it gives you ideas. So there were some primary school kids and they came up with the crew detector. So what they'll do, the Raspberry Pi will measure temperature and humidity. And if there's a change in temperature and humidity, they think, well, Tim Peake or another astronaut's gone in. His body's giving off heat and he's breathing out. So they'll take a photo and they'll see if it correlates between having a photo taken of potentially an astronaut or not. So they'll be able to work out if they built an astronaut detector. You might find an alien or something. Yeah. Um, the other one's to log all these sensors, take them back, and then to put them into Minecraft. So kids love Minecraft, so what, what, what better way to actually get them excited than saying, here's all the sensors, here's all the readings. And some people have actually created little spaceships in Minecraft which can float around as well. So you'll, you'll see lots of exciting things like that happening. Um, some key, key, stray, key stage three children um, have done flags. So NORAD will say whereabouts uh, the International Space Station is and as it flies over UK, France, it will put the flag up and then it will give a little phrase saying hello Tim, good luck Tim in whatever language it is. So the idea is Tim will look and he'll go, oh, I'm over England and I've got a message for England. And he'll feel really happy if he's lonely. <laughs> um, some other key stage three people have done an environmental monitor. So all the sensors <coughs> will monitor and if it goes beyond a certain range, it will set off an alarm and say, uh, the door's blown off. <laughs> <laughs> Shut the window. <laughs> um, plant health, yeah, uh, we mentioned that already. Um, the astro pile will look out the window, take lots of readings, they'll come back, post process it, and they'll work out if places like Africa don't have a lot of plant life compared to places like maybe Canada and work out things like that. Um, reaction games. When Tim goes up, it's a bit strange for him being in space. First couple of days, they, their balance is off. So they can either take some pills to stop them being sick, kind of like seasick, or they can just get over it. So Tim... <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so Tim, Tim's basically not taking the pills, and after a day, you woke up, and he was quite, he was quite happy. So that, that was... Um, that's quite good for him, but over a period of time, because his body will degrade if he's not doing enough exercise, his bones will degrade, and maybe his mind might degrade, or he might go loopy or whatever. He's going to do these reaction games, and they'll measure it, and they'll work out over time what happens to him. Um, uh, radiation, one of the key stage five entries was to measure the radiation, and they'd actually look at how many white dots appeared and they'd be able to work out uh, cosmic radiation. And that actually went down to one of these nuclear places, a bunch of kids, and uh, took their astro pies and measured how much radiation you get if you go near a nuclear reactor, or where if they let them go. So, um, the last one I mentioned was one of the girls from South End, uh, and I helped her um, with, with this in some of the workshops. Um, Tim will hold the Astro Pi in his hand, and then what he'll do is uh, he'll spin around with his eyes shut and press the button, and he'll try to guess 360 degrees. So as he comes back, I did it quite well there. I had my feet, I could hear things, and I've got my balance. But in space, over a period of time, that might change. How will it change, we don't know. But her little experiment that she's done will do that. But she's also said, back on Earth, there are people who have problems with balance. One of her friends 
uh, is deaf and has problems with balance. So not only would it help NASA, but people back on Earth, um, it could help. So she got highly commended for that. Her code wasn't too hard, but the science and the human biology, how she actually interacted, how people interact with her space, that was really um, what, what happened and why she got highly commended. Um, any questions? Um, you said that uh, it might be interesting to run the code here. Yeah. Is there a central repository for them somewhere where they can be? Uh, yeah, on that website, um, printcompure.co.uk and astropi, uh, astro-pi.net, it will be out. Uh, it will be announced in the next couple of weeks, and if you want to get the latest news as soon as possible, uh, it will be on Twitter. Um, yeah, and it's already on GitHub for at least seven of them, and the data will all come out. So we could... Are they releasing the, the data as well? <coughs> yeah, yeah, Tim will, Tim will email it down. Um, they, they've got the internet, and Tim, Tim's going to give some of the kids the phone call. So he'll be like, hi, it's Tim Peak. Your code's quite good. Can you change it so that I can get past level two because I can't play the game? <laughs> <laughs> or something like that. So, so, yeah, some of the kids might get a bit of a surprise. Um, anyone else? No one wants to know how astronauts go to the toilet in space. <laughs> <laughs> Who, who wants to uh, go to space? Anyone else? Yeah. <laughs> sure. Well, Femi might. So. How do you go to the toilet? Well, they go to the toilet, and instead of gravity, they just have a very big fan. So that's how that's how a lot of things <laughs> that's how a lot of things work on the International Space Station. If you haven't got gravity coming somewhere, they'll have a massive fan basically just sucking whatever. So if they have if they have a haircut, because they have to have haircuts, uh, like one one of the ladies had like a massive hair, but the men like to have their hair cut. Um, they have a big vacuum cleaner and clippers. So as they're clipping yeah, it gets sucked. Yeah, so, yeah, obviously they have to, there's a lot of recycling of air, because if you stand in the corner and breathe, then all the carbon dioxide will build up. So they have to have a lot of sucking of air and circulation. So, any other questions? Is Tim Peake the only one astronaut who is going to <clears throat> do an experience on uh, Raspberry or Astro Pies? Um, all the astronauts are doing science experiments. Tim Peake has been tasked as the first official European Space Agency uh, British astronaut to <coughs> run the Astro Pie. So he might say, this is a really good game. Yeah, do you want to have a go? So, the other astronauts might have a go. Um, I don't know exactly what's happening. He might get lazy one day and go, oh, can you run this for me? I'm feeling a bit ill. Um, in the future, certainly the American Space Agency, they're looking at running Astro Pi competition next year. And we may have it back in Europe and around the world later, because the Astro Pies are actually up in space uh, for a good few years, I think 2022. They can't just fly them up, fly them back. It's not that easy, so <laughs> we're going to make use of them. So to answer that, uh, Tim Peake's coming back, and if other people, maybe an American astronaut will do it, then the American astronaut will do it in the future. And that's, that's pretty, uh, <coughs> pretty imminent. They're planning, and basically everyone's begging. We want to do it. Um, so hopefully, yeah. So more, more chances to win, people. Thank you.